If you were to look at Jeff Cortnell's early day sports photo album, you would see a slight youngster keen on baseball, track, and soccer. His Division 5 Lansdowne Evening Optimist team reached the Provincial Sun Soccer Tournament final that ended in a draw for a share of the championship. Although he had learned to skate at Memorial Arena, he didn't start playing hockey till he was nine, when his dad Archie, who loved hockey, began coaching and took him and his younger brother to practice at the racket club at six in the morning. He went through their minor program and soon began to tear past other players his age. Shortly after Archie passed away, Jeff was the Cougars' stick boy when a summer growth spurt gave him the size hockey players are made of. He spent a year with the Couch and Valley Capitals in the BC Junior League. When the Caps bowed out from the playoffs prematurely that season, it turned into an advantage for Jeff. Cougars coach Jack Shoup brought him up for the rest of the WHL season, and he wound up in 26 games, played in the Western Junior League title, and an appearance in the 1981 Memorial Cup. That was the start of Jeff's somewhat unbelievable rise to stardom in the WHL and the NHL. What followed right after that were two starring seasons. Jeff became a regular with the Cougars as a 19-year-old, and his 35 goals and 57 assists earned him a mid-season All-Star selection. But a tough second half and an early exit by the defending WHL champs left him unsatisfied. So he hit the weight room and pounded the speed bag. The result? 20 extra pounds and a mean streak instilled by Tom Black, Jeff's off-season coach and mentor. The next season, when younger brother Russ reached the Cougars level, the change in his play was evident. He hit with authority, dropped his gloves all too willingly, and became a vocal team leader. To play together on the same team, and better still, the same line, was thrilling in itself. But more importantly to the kids from Oak Bay, it was their late father's dream come true. If the script were to end there, it would be an unqualified success. But to Jeff, the elder statesman, the only proper ending to the story was an appearance and victory by the Victoria Cougars in the Memorial Cup. Although Jeff scored 47 goals and accumulated 127 points that season, the Cougars had to stage an amazing 14 wins in their last 15 games to finish second best. Memorial Arena was sold out for the semis against Kamloops that went to seven games. And once again, just like the 1951 pros, it was a Victoria-Portland shootout. Only this time, the bad guys won. You could only assume the scouts were looking for something other than innate talent and a will to win. But when you know you've got something, you don't let going undrafted hold you back. Jeff signed with the Boston Bruins as a free agent and then defied the odds. After a year of shuttling between Hershey and Moncton of the American League, he worked his way into the Bruins lineup for 64 games in his second season. Jeff went on to play another three seasons in Boston, and after scoring 32 goals in 62 games, he was traded to Edmonton late in 1987-88. He added four more goals in the last regular season games, and was in their lineup for 19 playoff games when Wayne Gretzky and the Oilers won their second straight Stanley Cup. Ironically, it was the Bruins the Oilers beat in the Cup Finals. But it wasn't time to sit down just yet. Jeff was on the move the next season, having his best offensive year in the NHL with 42 goals and 80 points for the Washington Capitals. Next season, he picked up 74 points, but was dealt to the St. Louis Blues. And then came the trade. The Vancouver Canucks Minister of Everything, Pat Quinn, needed something to push his team into the playoffs, and just before the 1991 trading deadline, he got it. Who can forget the Blues Brothers deal? Dan Quinn and Garth Butcher to St. Louis for Jeff, Robert Dirk, Sergio Mameso, Cliff Ronning, and Futures. The Canucks made the playoffs that year. Jeff poured in 31 goals the next season to get them into the postseason again, and was part of the squad which pushed the Rangers to the seven-game limit of the 1994 Stanley Cup Final. Jeff moved back to St. Louis in 1995, getting a substantial contract, but four years later he suffered a neck injury. Until then, he hadn't missed more than 10 games due to injury, but this one finished the season and his career. He tried to come back in 1999-2000, but packed it in after six games. Jeff Cortnell was one of the NHL's success stories. Never drafted, this walk-on player became a model of hard work and determination, spending 17 seasons in the show. Over 1,200 games, the 1,000th being played in his home province, 367 goals, 432 assists, plus 109 points in playoffs. There were two Stanley Cup final appearances, one cup ring, and the 1991 Canada Cup title, once again, playing alongside his brother Russ. Tonight we recognize his decades of outstanding hockey play as we induct into the Greater Victoria Sports Hall of Fame, NHL great Jeff Cortnall.